and welcome to Watching the Tudors. I'm Heather. And I'm Jonathan. And this is the podcast where we watch the Tudors and go into the depth of the history and background of the show, explaining the stories behind the story. Learn more about the show and about us at watchingthetudors.com. This is episode six, True Love. A quick reminder that if you like the show and want to see more of it, please give us a rating on iTunes. It's the number one way you can help a show succeed because it helps other people find the program. So we're going to do this the way we normally do. I will give a brief recap. And then Jonathan, who is new to the whole 16th century world, is going to ask questions and we'll have a little bit of a discussion about what life was really like for these folks. Just a spoiler alert, this whole series assumes that you've watched the episode or you are re-watching it with us. So if you haven't, please note that we're going to be talking about everything that happened. So, spoiler alert. Yeah, and also, like, bigger spoiler alerts, we assume you have a general working knowledge of this time period, like knowing that Henry VIII had many wives and things like that. So, yeah, because we're going to talk about stuff that yeah. happened yeah. in so. the future. Sorry if I gave that away, but yeah, Henry was married a few times. <laughs> There's a song about it and stuff. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. So also, hey, apologies for mix, missing a couple of weeks there. Thank you for those people who tweeted and posted and asked us when we were going to have a fresh episode. We had a sick Hannah Bear and visitors and stuff like that. So we'll try and stay on better schedule. Thank you for keeping us on that. Yeah, we missed you. Yeah, we did. So, and you missed the tutors. I did. <laughs> so this is episode six, True Love. And basically this episode is all about Henry and Anne totally falling in love. Anne is becoming a shadow queen. Catherine's being even more sidelined. Woolsey seems unable to produce Henry's longed for divorce. Woolsey's enemies are plotting against him. They pull Charles Brandon back in court in order to help undermine Woolsey's position. And Anne and Catherine have a couple of confrontations. Catherine tells her that she knows all about the affair. She calls Anne a whore. She says she will always have Henry's heart. And Anne takes it in her stride. She keeps her head held high. Woolsey goes to Paris. He negotiates a treaty with the French against the Spanish. He also convenes a conclave of cardinals. He believes that this conclave is going to give him the authority to handle the matters like Henry's divorce that the Pope can't handle because he is still a prisoner in Spain. Then the Pope escapes, and so the cardinals don't give him the power that he wants, and he has to return to England empty-handed. So let's jump right into the questions. My turn. Your turn. Or whatever. Your turn. (laughs) Okay, so it starts out, and they're talking about the about the Pope situation. So the Pope, I, I think we talked about this last episode, but the Pope really was a prisoner yes. of the Emperor. Yes. He was the Emperor of the Holy Roman he Empire. Was, during the sack of Rome, he was taken prisoner, and he was kept in a castle, and he and was... And why? Just to keep track of him? I mean, what, like... Well, he would have been a really great hostage... Okay, so just a, a bargaining yeah. chip. I and mean, also, they weren't going to, like, okay. And also, I think Charles made a lot of noises about how he felt really bad that he couldn't control his troops. Because what all happened was these German mercenaries went in and totally sacked Rome. And so I'm not sure that Charles actually, actually wanted them would have to. wanted it yeah. to happen. But at the same time, that also might have been him kind of equivocating as later on elizabeth the first would pretend that she knew nothing of that she didn't really sanction mary queen of scots's death even though she did it was kind of like this um what's it called in legal terms when you want to um plausible deniability pl- exactly yeah yeah so it might have also been that because he so really did maybe you might want to do this but don't tell me how it happened so right yeah yeah exactly okay interesting henry yes was really into anne Yes, it seems he and really, this, really like was. this was really a thing. Like, oh he was God, really, yes! All right, I mean, he I hear was really, I've, really into her. I've heard you and other people talk about their their love affair and stuff, but it's just I don't know. It's surprising to me still. I think it's surprising to a lot of people still. She had like she just had this power over him until she didn't. Yeah, and so I mean, I even wrote this down. Like, what was it? 
like was it just that she was playing hard to get was it that mixed with like who she was like yeah no i mean she so she was raised at the french court and with margaret of austria she was extremely cultured people thought that French people were, you know, much more cultured than English. That was like the style of mm-hmm. the times. And it wasn't really common for people to go to the French court. So, you know, it, it was, she was so exotic. she was sort of a rare thing already, like an English person who was... Who was ra- and also the court itself was, you know, licentious and really liberal. And also, like, when she was raised with Margaret of Austria, she had access to, like, feminist writings, and she was really smart. She, like, was really well-read in ways that women weren't so much at that time. She was, so, like, her own woman and not just some yeah thing. yeah, yeah. I see. And she apparently had eyes, really amazing eyes. She wasn't the most beautiful yeah. at all, but her she, eyes were special. Yeah. And then her dad and Norfolk guy are trying to tell her like what to do, mm-hmm. and she did not seem very happy about it. No. Like, did she dislike being a pawn, or was it that she just really loved Henry, and so it was like, or kind of a mixture of I both? I think it was but... kind of a mixture of both. I think that she didn't like being a pawn. And I think she was probably developing feelings for Henry for for this time. And also like seeing that, you know, the way she was playing it, she might actually wind up becoming queen. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, I'm going to be game than what these guys are playing. Kind of. Yeah. It's like, it's about more than just taking down Woolsey. It's about like, I might actually be queen. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bigger story than Woolsey. Yeah. Exactly. I think about Woolsey and she's, yeah. Henry was wearing some crazy outfits <laughs> he in was. this episode. Like, are those an accurate depiction of I, royal outfits? I, I'm, I know you aren't a fashion historian. No, but. I think so. And also, so there's a couple of things. One is last year, the Ren- my other podcast, the Renaissance English History Podcast, I did an episode on fashion. Mm-hmm. And there were all these laws on what people, they were sumptuary laws to keep the classes in order. So you could only wear certain colors if you were of a certain nobility or rank. Sanctuary is like play your part? Or yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so... And also licentious? I don't know about that. You, you use that word? Licentious. What's that? Oh, it's like um, they had a lot of sex. Okay. Yeah. So they were promiscuous. Yeah. Okay. I'm just... Uh, yeah. This is, you know, <laughs> us people who aren't into history also don't have large vocabularies. So I'm um, <laughs> just... You know, for any viewers out there. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, so I did that. And then also, if people have not watched the wonderful series, The Private Lives of the Tudors, that Tracy Borman did, they, um, it was on in the UK on the Yesterday channel. And I think you can still watch it on demand if you have access to UK television. And I'm (coughs) not advocating (coughs) a VPN here, but... You can Google how to get access to UK television. Google will tell you, not me. So anyway, The Private Lives of the Tudors. There was this really great scene. Plausible deniability. Plausibility, yes. There was this really great scene where um, they found this hat that ha- had belonged to Henry. They have very few items of clothing that were actually his mm-hmm. because it was so expensive. Those kinds of materials, yeah. they would constantly be reused For and sure. turned into different things. Or if things. you found it, you wouldn't put it in your you know, put it in your closet yeah. like 500 years later. Yeah. So um, they, they have very few items that were actually his, but one thing they do have is a hat and it is this bright red, like fedora. Like crazy looking, looking hat. Yeah. Oh my. And it's like bright red. Yeah. It's like Cardinal, like hot. You wouldn't red. imagine. It was just bright red and him with his red hair and stuff like that too. It was like, talk yeah, about he had red well, hair. Yeah. Okay. Like kind of reddish. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah reddish. Um, so yeah, anyway, he, there was some pretty outlandish clothing and it was all, you know, in an attempt to look even more grand and mm-hmm. show off how wealthy you were that you could wear all of Henry loved to wear jewels all over himself to like, just drape himself and have them sewn into his clothes to show how rich he was. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, he liked to wear some outlandish things. Okay. And then they were talking about going to France and, Henry said, I'd like to send Thomas Wyatt as a special envoy or whatever. He wanted to be included, yeah. And he just he just wanted to get him Away. out of mm-hmm. out of town. Yeah. All right. 
boyfriend. Because he had get been out yeah, yeah, with yeah, Anne. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. And and Woolsey said something to Anne. Like, what did he He called he, her a silly girl. Yeah. Like, did he... What, what Did they have a weird relationship? Or? Well, yeah. So Anne had been pre or pre-contracted to marry a guy called Henry Percy uh, that was kind of a nobleman. And... Woolsey had ixnayed the marriage. Like this was before Anne was, and I think it was just a routine thing that mm-hmm. he said no. Yeah, and when you were that high, Henry Percy was a high, higher noble person, mm-hmm. and when you were that high in rank, like the king kind of could control your marriage a lot more and stuff. Yeah. And so Henry said, or so Woolsey said, no, he can't marry this lowly born, you know, because her father's yeah. just a diplomat or a merchant or whatever yeah. he was, and so like she can't do that. And so Anne had a beef against him for that mm. and um but i don't know that woolsey would have even remembered yeah yeah because it was probably just a piece just of paperwork thing. yeah a long you know time i don't ago. remember paperwork from five years ago yeah so um i don't know that he remembered it but he just kind of saw all these girls who flew through themselves at henry as being it was like just another girls. one yeah and she's just so it wasn't anything personal per no se. but for Anne, it was and yeah, 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 yeah. But for him, it was just some other girl. Some, yeah. Some... All right. An and... interesting fun fact is that later, when we see Woolsey being arrested in real life, the person that actually in this in the movie or in the show, it shows him apparently with you know like a whole army right. practically comes in, but in real life, it was Henry Percy that arrested him. So it was, and I think Henry Percy really loved Anne. So, so it's, it gets deep. It gets it's deep. Shit gets real deep. And, and I guess from later, like, it seemed like he was surprised when he found the letters or what, like he didn't know about Anne. Mm, huh? I don't, I don't know that he knew. And I think all of that, I, I mean, by this point, I think the, the whole court probably knew. And I think, yeah. he, I think that maybe part of this was dramatic license to show his fall, like to show that he was being Just sidelined. one more thing. Like he didn't know about, yeah. and it was like, Oh no. But like, he I mean, to, I, yeah, it's interesting. Cause the first few shows, it was like, like he, he was everything. the one who knew everything. Yeah. And now it's like, he's sort of like, Oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Oh, this didn't work. Oh, I didn't even know about this. Yeah. And, and I think that he oh, probably would have, yeah, he probably would have known, but uh, well, he would have known that Henry and Anne were, were doing by this point. Cause I think this is set like, you know, two or three years into their affair, mm-hmm. but, um, he, he might not have known the seriousness that yeah, Henry how, how, really wanted. Yeah, that he was writing to the Pope and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, right, you're another girl he's sleeping with or something. Yeah. Did, like, Anne and Henry, did, like, did they really see each other? Yes. Like, oh, so she was just... By this point, she kind of set up, like, a shadow court mm-hmm. as well. So she was really she getting was, ready. She was mm-hmm. moving in. She was moving in. And how old were they, Henry and Anne, about mm-hmm. at this point? He was about 35 and she was about 25. So, like, well, And he was getting difference. close to 40, but he was born in 1491, and she was born, nobody knows exactly, they kind of guess around 1501. Mm-hmm. So by this point, she was she was getting close to 30, 28, 29. Well, about but yeah. 10 years different. Yeah. Hmm. That's not horrible. That's not that bad. It um, doesn't become bad until later when Henry's in his 50s and Mary's a teenager. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, or late 40s, early 50s. I forget the difference between him and Catherine Howard. It was pretty bad. And... In the show, it se- she seems outspoken. Yeah, she was. Okay, so she really was outspoken. And Henry, did he like that? Like, did he... Yeah. I mean, he was like the king and nobody ever talked... Think of how exciting that would be. So to kind of have someone, like, tell you what's actually going on. Yeah, his whole life, nobody ever told him what was... I know. feel like that's, like, the worst... Uh, yeah, uh, totally sidetracking for 30 seconds. But I feel like that's the problem with, like you know, rich people or celebrities or something like that lose their mind. Like they go, you know, Britney Spears and Justin Bieber's like, they just have like everyone, everyone, everywhere all the time just says yes and tells them what they want to hear or what they think they want to hear. Like they aren't even listening to the words they're saying. Mm -hmm. Like they just think, what do I say? Like, what do I do to make this person like me? Yeah. Yeah, so that would be nice. Yeah, to, and, and to have it be a pretty girl. Yeah, who's who telling was you what, smart. What's and, going on? Yeah, and you know she was um, 
again, that's part of having been raised at the court of Margaret of Austria and with all these mm-hmm. this strong woman figure. Um, she, yeah, she told him stuff and he liked it. Nice. She kind of put him in her. And you see, the thing is, the problem for her, as we will see in later seasons, that works great as a mistress. It doesn't work it so looks, well. When as, you're being chased. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're a wife, no, you especially the wife of a king. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The queen's that's, job that's was... the girlfriend's place, yeah. is to be all outspoken and wild. Yeah. The queen's Ugh. job is to be quiet and make sons. And to make babies. Yeah. Ugh. And then the queen, like, she really knew about Catherine, really knew about that he wanted a divorce. Like, yes. Like, in real life, that's a real... Okay. And then we're back with the Thomas Tallis gay love affair. Yeah, we've already talked about that. I know. You don't like it. And it's still fake. Yeah, it's... From and Thomas we, Tallis wasn't even tell. at court at this time, so it just yeah. needs to stop. <laughs> and then, so what was the conversation with Woolsey and Moore about? Like, I didn't, I didn't really. Woolsey was telling him that was telling Moore that he, you know, he was going to Paris, and he thought this conclave of cardinals was going to give him the right to adjudicate. Mm-hmm. And Moore said, you know, then you're going to be basically as powerful as the Pope, and. I think, like, Woolsey said, well, you know, are you going to abide by what they decide? And I think Moore said that he didn't think he would. And so I guess I guess what I'm kind of confused about mm-hmm. is more like I, I get Woolsey. Like, I know what he's trying to do and I know what he's doing and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like more like where where is his allegiance? Like with with to the, God, like just to the rules kind of with him. Yeah. I mean, just kind of like, well, God's, you know, and the Pope's supposed to be this, Mm -hmm. and God said this, and okay. Thomas More was really into, like, order and, Mm -hmm. you know, things following. And he he was in support of reform, but, you know, slowly and prodding, orderly orderly reform. Not like a revolution or something. And, you know, he's going to be killed because he never accepted Anna's queen. Like he stuck with it. He's, ser- he's like he's serious. He seriously said he wouldn't take the oath, and that's. I mean, that's that's what's respectable, honorable. Yeah. I, I mean, I like someone of principle. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So he he was just, I think, starting. I think this is like Poor shadowing. More. Jeez, it's like everyone dies. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's. It's interesting <laughs> because the- <laughs> spoiler alert: everyone dies. There's been a um, there's been a kind of recent surge in interest of Thomas More because he was portrayed really badly in Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall. And so, and he did burn some Protestants. I think we talked about this in an earlier mm-hmm. episode. Um, but, you know, I think uh, he tried to be fair about his burning of yeah, Protestants. No, and, he was, and we talked and, and, about And he, and he probably and, felt a little bad. Yeah. I, well, as, actually, as I don't think he did. No, I, I don't think he did because he really truly believed he was... You know, if you have a cancer, I, I get it. You have to cut it out. I get it. Yeah. And heretics were cancer. Yeah. So Woolsey and Moore. Yes. Did they not like each other, or was, it was just this on this topic? Or I mean, they, I it was, it was they, they probably just kind of had a working relationship. Yeah, they I mean, weren't. It's like, not like they're all buddies or something. I think at first, you know, Moore would have looked up to Woolsey because he was a. Cardinal, Cardinal and stuff. Yeah. but I think at this point he was starting after to getting see, to know him and being like, "Gosh, you don't follow the rules." See, there, this is champ. all just like politics and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, was Anne like Anne seems to be talking with her brother a lot? Yeah. Was she really close? I mean, was she act? Was she close to her brother in reality? Yeah, and later they would be, they were so close that they were accused of having incestual relationships with each yeah, other. I remember you said that. I oh, know, it was that other show we were watching. I'm, I'm just, we were, just to tell the, 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 the listeners, I'm, I'm starting to get into history to the point where <laughs> when Dear Heather is watching other history programs. The BBC One series, yeah. The Six Wives, right now. Okay, so the BBC One series, Six, the Six Wives, instead of finding something else to do in another part of the house. You sat down and I watched it with and, me. And, yeah. I think I was looking at something else, but I was listening. Yeah. Intently. So you're all kind of confused right now. Cause... I am confused. Cause I know all these like details about the future and, Oh, and I just, I just got to say, I'm my, my, what do you call it? I, I don't, 
I'm, I'm, I'm biased. I, I came into this unbiased, like, I don't know who these people are and, mm-hmm. you know, keeping an open mind. I really dis, I'm growing to dislike Henry very really? much. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I really don't like him. Fair enough. But uh, it's cool. We're rolling with it and he's yeah. the star of the show. And, mm-hmm. But just as a person and a historical figure, yeah, not a big fan. Yeah. I- and I'm sure a lot of it can be chalked up to that's kind of how things were, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like holding it against Thomas More that he burned Protestants, but yeah, like, that's but, just what people did. You know, the but, killing of a queen, it was the first time a queen was ever killed when he killed Anne Boleyn and it shocked. And just the, it, the thing, like this will probably never come up in this show. I don't know. But like the fact that Henry never let Catherine see her daughter, Mary. Yeah. Again. It'll come up later in the season. Oh, it just, what yeah. a jerk. Well, I mean, I yeah. get it. That's how things were. No, and also, I, I like know, at the time, you know, the children were raised separately anyway. Yeah. And yeah, it was care. definitely punitive. I You're think not going to change my, my. No, I'm not trying to, but I, I think that he was really, really upset because he, something later on when we see his relationship with Anne of Cleves, he when he when you accepted his will, he was willing to be very, very generous. So, like when when he wanted a divorce from Anne of Cleves because she was ugly and smelled supposedly <laughs> nobody mentioned it before the marriage and even when she was at calais waiting to come over everybody wrote about how beautiful she was but oh then henry God. saw her and suddenly she smelled like was ugly this dog. so um but so he he said that he wanted a divorce from her and she of course was petrified because she knew what had happened yeah. and she just went along with it and was like okay well she made out like a bandit she got she was the highest ranking she officially got the title of the king's sister <sighs> she was the highest ranking woman at court below his daughters yeah. and the queen. I think actually she was equal That's to his crazy. daughter. Yeah. And she made, she got so much money. She got houses. She got like three or four houses. She, she could and, probably marry whoever she wanted. or Yeah, like whatever. all kinds of stuff. And so the thing is, if you were willing to go, like I think if Catherine would have said, okay, I get what you're saying. I'll go along with all uh, this. And also she's, like, she's like, I'm in menopause. I'm not going to have a mm-hmm. son. Like, let me just go to a nunnery and yeah. be with God all day. That's fine. But she was really concerned about her daughter's rights. You know, if she would have admitted that the, that the marriage wasn't um, legal or whatever, um, wasn't valid, then her daughter would have lost her place in the succession as well. And so she was looking out for that. And I think she truly didn't understand what the big deal was, why her daughter couldn't, you know, couldn't inherit. So she was very stubborn, Catherine was. And I think by this point, you know, years in, Henry was just like, yeah, what he didn't the hell? Want like, yeah, he's tired of this. Yeah. And if he could keep pushing buttons to try to. And it didn't matter to him. It was no. just like telling someone to write something down and yeah, exactly. sending it off. But it is interesting with Anne of Cleves. He was so willing to be so generous if you went along with him. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're in we're back in France in in the show. Yes. Um and the king's son once again is <laughs> is is betrothed or is going to be married to Mary yes. apparently. Yes. That just it, it's crazy. I mean it's yeah, cuz that that was at the cloth what is it? The field of the cloth of gold, yeah. Yeah, and they met and and now they're yep, yeah, again. Yep. Just yep. the rotating door of people and he only Mary's, had one daughter, right? So yeah, he had to. I know, really. Milk it for what he could. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah move, move her around. It would the, have been the, different if he had like six children. He could have yeah. just, you know. But yeah. with one, Sold it was hard. Slowly. And do you think. So there was a, a scene with Anne and the Queen and mm-hmm. Catherine having a really awkward, like, uncomfortable talk. Yeah. I mean, is I, it your guess that. They would have that kind of weird. Talk. I I'm sure they had weird run-ins because Anne was still serving yeah. Catherine, so I'm sure that they had weird run-ins. It would be weird if they didn't. But at the same time, I don't think Catherine Catherine's whole thing was she was the daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella. Yeah, I don't think she she's was going to da- be talking. No, there. she's not going to lower herself right. to that. She's a queen. She's the daughter of warriors. She's not going to lower yeah. herself to talk to this woman. Yeah, yeah, and then. Now the Pope. The Pope. He escaped. He did escape. Like he really is, like this is a real thing. No, he really did escape. It just sounds so funny. He bought off. The Pope on the run. Yeah, no, he bought off some officers that were guarding him and he disguised himself as a peddler and he he got out of the castle where he was being held. I like it. Yeah. That That is a witty 
Pope. Yeah, and he made it back to Rome. I, it was like a year and a half after the sack. The what, sacking. A tri- what a trip. I and just can't imagine back. being this renegade, runaway renegade pope. pope like, <laughs> sounds like a book. Disguised. <laughs> I know. It sounds like a comic, runaway like a Carl Hyacin book, The Runaway Pope. <laughs> you can if Carl Hyacin ever funny story, <laughs> you got to pitch it to <laughs> make it. I, I want a percentage, though. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So he. So the Pope was really on on the run. Yes. And then Henry is asking for someone he can trust to send a note. Yes. And Anne says this Doctor Knight who used to be her tutor. Yeah. So I want to put this out to listeners. I can't find anything on this Doctor Knight fellow, and I also don't think that he. Anne would have had to. Anne was raised in France and Burgundy, and I don't know that she would have had a tutor. Mm -hmm. So, if any listeners know if this Doctor Knight is real, I'm leaning towards no because I just can't find anything on him on anywhere. But um, I would love to hear from people if they if they know that he's that he's real or Or, not. uh, And and I'll take theories. I, I mean, Heather might want you know. Some facts. I'll, yeah. If you got any theories on this Dr. Knight. Dr. Knight fellow. Or even, I, I thought it was Dr. White. So if, if you have any theories on <laughs> Dr. Knight or Dr. White. And I've even scoured like the tutors it. wikis and all the different fact checking tutors blogs and stuff that yeah. there are. And I can't find anything on him. No. So I'm, I'm leaning towards that he didn't exist. And I'm leaning that way too, because that's what she says. <laughs> she's the expert in this area. Right. So, Okay. All right, and but did he really? So we're not sure about the 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 messenger, but right. did he 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 did he to really pope. write to the pope in, like about this? Yeah, in 1530. So the Vatican actually in 2009 released his letter. God, it's so crazy. This stuff exists. Like, I just yeah. I mean, just yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. We have this stuff. Yeah. So the Vatican has the letter, and it was. Um, It was basically, it wasn't a plea asking for the annulment. It was basically a request that he would hurry his decision along. um, Because Clement, by this point, Clement's back in Rome. So this is like two years after. And so he's back in Rome, but he doesn't want to piss off Charles. And Charles is Catherine's nephew. He's like, I don't want to be a person. I've done that once. Right. So he was like trying every kind of like deal he could to stall the heck out of it and all this kind of stuff. And so Henry wrote him a letter begging him to like move things along a little bit, yeah. keep things going. And so that letter still exists. And I guess the Vatican sold 199 facsimiles of the document accompanied by related scholarly texts for $68,000 each. When? In 2009. Wow. So if you want to own a facsimile. <laughs> God, the Vatican's like just... A money making machine, huh? I guess. Wow. Yeah. And also the letter or, or the center of, of God on earth. Right. Depending, depending on your on, religion. On who the, on, on, on what empire conquered the, the world you live in. Um the letter actually interestingly also includes eighty five seals and signatures of the peers of England in solidarity with the king. I just love it. Like like they care. Right. You know, I mean I'm just imagining like them you know, someone showing up at the door. Yes, I am here for the Duke of Westerberry. <laughs> we 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 requ- the king has requested that you stamp and steal this letter to the Pope. About him getting a d- divorce and just saying, God, this crap again? Right. Just whatever. Yeah, I'm signing it. I don't want to get my head chopped off. Like, are right. you kidding me? Yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Here's my seal here's my and seal. stamp. There you go. All right. Um, and Henry seemed really upset with Brandon. Like, this yeah. is, st- he's still like angry. Yeah. Like, he no, was really they, pissed. He was really pissed off. Yeah. And they had to pay huge fines, and yeah, it was he was really pissed off. Yeah, and I don't blame him. Like he had so few marriage pawn. Like we just said with Mary, he only had. No, one, I, I like, do. I mean, I get. Uh, I can almost get it. It's it's almost like like he wasn't so mad at like Brandon. 
it's like what he was mad at. It's like you're messing up what I'm trying to – you're messing mm-hmm. up my deal here. Yeah. It's not so much like how could you go against me. It's not so much like don't you know who I am. Right. It's more just like come on, dude. Like – Work with I, me a little th- bit There's here. only two women. That I like, can marry off. <laughs> yeah. We won't go through the names because it's all confusing. But the one's married off to the, to the one already in In Scotland. Scotland. Yes. And so I only have – my daughter and my other sister, and that's it. Like yeah. we're working with two people here, yeah. And no you boys, go and marry just two one. Girls. Like you go yeah. and, ma- and I can't kill you, right? And now she's married, so she ain't gonna. And you're she's young, no good. so you're not gonna die anytime soon. It's just, uh, dude, I, yeah, I can see. And also, the other thing with this is, her children are gonna have a claim to the throne. So she married this guy who was a new man, right? Didn't come from old nobility. His father was, you know, yeah. Henry the Seventh's standard bearer or whatever yeah. so there it's possible that yeah, his nephew into the into the into the, into the throne, throne right kind of thing yeah yeah so i I'd, I'd be pissed off too. yeah i can i can see that and do you have any do we know like did brandon and margaret i guess in the show it's mary mm-hmm. Yeah, Margaret. it's Margaret. Yeah, but in and real it, life, it was, it was Mary. Mary yes. So the the woman in question. Yes. Like, did they really love each other? Was this? I mean, was it just like a a plan no, by I him? No, I think they had like, a. I think they really they loved really each other. They really seemed to yeah. to get down. Okay. Yeah. And they lived a very quiet life away from court, and they seemed. <laughs> they didn't have much choice. Yeah. No, but they seemed. <laughs> no, but they, happy. they did. It wasn't like they they got divorced now that they didn't have yeah. money. And, and stuff. then um, they later on. I think Mary slash Margaret stayed away from court because she supported Catherine and Mm -hmm. all of that. And so, yeah. um, yeah. And which put Charles Brandon in an awkward position. Yeah, I can imagine. So I know it's not like there are particularly records of this, but like Anne would go like hunting with him. I mean, she would just kind of be around hanging out and like, they're Oh, just reminds me of like an annoying girlfriend. who's like, no offense to girlfriends out there. Yeah. But just like the one or like, you know, the band, like the Yoko Ono. Like yeah. She just yeah, seems yeah. like, all right, we're all here and your girlfriend. Yeah. And like we're hunting and oh, you, you brought, you brought your, girlfriend your girlfriend hunting. Yeah. yeah. Like seriously. Yeah. Dude. No, I mean, Hen- Henry was just besotted. Yeah. He was just. She's just all about her. Yeah. What was Wolsey doing in France? He was trying to get that. Well, he was negotiating a treaty. Um, oh, he was doing all sorts of yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was so negotiating he was a treaty with the king, the king of uh, friendship. France yeah, Fr- against well, Spain. In theory, I think they were just agreeing to be friends with each other, which then, by definition, would mean okay. they hated Spain. Yeah. Um, and then he also was trying to get this kind of, <laughs> aka, we actually meant our first treaty that we went that we completely <laughs> exactly. turned our back on, like right after we signed it. Yeah. But yeah, we're here just it's yeah. like just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. And he was trying to get those cardinals together. When in doubt, war with when in doubt, war when with France. Doubt, war with France. <laughs> I have a um, I'm gonna do a series on war with France this coming January. Yeah. Yeah. So he mentioned peace with the Emperor. Woolsey yeah. did. Why did Woolsey want peace all the time? I think Woolsey was tired of money going towards all these stupid wars that he's like that you. People were just changing like, it. Yeah. Like why? Like he's like, let's just be friends. Yeah. Let's just and be also, friends and build some cool I think it would have helped him in the, uh, have a world cup. Have a, I think it would have helped him in the being seen as a potential candidate for a Pope. Oh, it's like it, a peacemaker. It, yeah. 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 Cause like theoretically the church is against war. Theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> hardy, hardy. Um, So it seems like that. Gosh, I was really put off by that scene. Which scene? And my question is like, would this kind of thing actually happen? Okay. Where like Henry just totally like spits in the queen's face. Yeah. Like she came in, like they were like, oh, now the queen. And he's like, everyone must hang on while I talk to Anne. Yeah. And. Oh, like that. I mean, he he would do. He things did like, stuff that was really disrespectful like atrocious, to her. Just, it's atrocious. Yeah, I don't know that he ever. You know, so one thing about him is until the until close to the end, he made a very public display of saying that he really wished he could still be married to her, but it was his conscience 
that was keeping him from it. So, um, and that was because when he still thought he had hope from the hope from the Pope, yeah, I know. he wanted it to look like, you know, it was really, his, it, really, it yeah. was really his, his gut telling yeah. him, but he really wished, and he would say, you know, I want nothing more than to be able to yeah, have I you be I my could. wife I and I love you more than anybody, but blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And so, but then there was a turning point when he realized, when he started really getting frustrated and that was like when, when he, he didn't even care anymore. Yeah. And that was when he basically, you know, dumped, said, like, screw, screw you. And- yeah. And there was like, Ugh. and he moved Anne into the palaces and gave her her own ladies in waiting. She's and the all daughter stuff. of Isabel and Ferdinand. Like, yeah. Oh no, she's like you know, a, yeah. What a, mm. yeah. Not a big fan. All right. Woolsey was Woolsey really taking money? I. I, I guess don't. We don't have the the accounting. The accounting. Notes, but um, I would guess that he was. It was kind of a perk of those kinds of jobs. Mm-hmm. And did Henry? I guess this was something we might know. Like, did Henry really find out and get like upset? I mean, is this anywhere? Like, does it write down I think, Henry's grievances of? No, or I think that just um, when he was finally arrested, it they talked about how he had stopped being able to be a good to be a good servant. And, you know, the thing is basically as long as Woolsey got the King, what he wanted, I don't think the King you don't really even cared. think he cared. No, like, he whatever. was like, whatever he's he had doing. enough to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like you do what you like. If I get what I want, you get, you get what, what you want. want and yeah, everyone's like, happy. No big deal. Right. That makes sense. I mean, that, yeah. that makes a lot more sense than. Yeah. So then by this point, I, you know, if he was starting to doubt him, he would have seen stuff like that in a different light. Mm hmm. And so we already actually, you actually already answered this question or what you thought, like, um, Anne was cleaning Catherine's feet and then she saw the necklace that Henry gave her and it was uncomfortable and weird. And so our guess is that kind of scene probably would not have happened. The daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella would not have stooped so low as to make it at all show that she was upset or that and also she, i mean that would make her, her even, equal even more than that i just feel like when they're like hey who do you want to wash your feet tonight she'd say kathy instead of Anne. yeah well she might make Anne just to show just her to who's in stick who's her boss. smelly feet in her face exactly but <laughs> i don't think that she would okay. have then proceeded to call her a whore yeah she would have just been like, thank you for, you know, yeah. you've washed my feet. Great. Yeah. You may she go. She doesn't go on your way, peasant. Exactly. And then, so we already talked about Dr. Knight and yeah. our thoughts on him. So we won't need to go. Yeah. So I had written down, did, did Woolsey actually find him and divert him or what? But we don't know that he actually existed. Yeah. Um. Henry... And Anne's mom, like so, somewhere in there, there was Henry, something about Henry being with Anne's mom. Yeah. Is that like a re- rumor? There were rumors of that. And then apparently later on, like somebody, there's like somebody said something about how he'd been with the mother and two daughters. And Henry kind of said, well, n- not really the mother or, you know, never yeah. the mother or whatever. So, I, you know, Henry kind of muttered that he hadn't been with the mother yeah but there were rumors that he had okay so it's possible and i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past that thomas boleyn like hey you can have my wife too yeah geez that guy she's like <laughs> well, here's my one daughter here's my pro- other daughter oh you like probably- boys here's my son i it's just like <laughs> this was probably before they'd been married when she was younger oh i would guess yeah i don't know i don't put anything past any of these folks yeah um, it's so funny because it's so like the court is just so different to like real I, life. Real yeah, life. I mean it's like with anything. It, it's like yeah. you know the the courts, the White House is different. But I mean any kind of like the stuff you read in Us Weekly with celebrities and yeah, it's just on that stuff. other plane plane yeah. of living. Yeah, yeah. The upper the upper class live in a different way. Not just the upper class, the one percent. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like the upper, upper, upper class. Yeah. Like there's the royalty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They there's a whole different lifestyle going on there. Indeed. It's like the thing is, most people were worried about harvests, and most people were worried about the rains, and most people were worried about you know sicknesses and and all this kind of stuff. Although there were some things. I mean, I think it's like 
showing that Catherine's children died, you know, shows that, and Anne would have miscarriages and stuff show that, you know, nobody was immune to this to kind of things, yeah. stuff. But, you know, like I just imagine like the average person, like worrying about their harvest or, you know, the, the, um, the currency, like what, what their money was going to buy and all this st- kind of stuff. I, Henry was always doing weird things to the currency to try and beat inflation and cause inflation or whatever. He was always messing around yes. with stuff and things are always uneven. And I just think about, you know, it's so easy for him to just say, okay, we're going to debase the currency. And yeah. then like the average person is like, well, shit, now, now I can't, I can't eat. <laughs> eat. Like I literally can't eat. <laughs> exactly. Gosh. And this is the, in the times before like economic theories. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's funny. Oh, it's Cause just, like, yeah. You know, like the whole thing was that the value of the coin was like how much gold was in it. Mm-hmm. And then people would like melt it and then add in, mm-hmm. in other kinds of mm-hmm. like bronze or whatever, tin stuff that wasn't worth as much. And it's just funny because like, can you like, can you imagine doing that now? Like, I mean, I guess that's what counterfeiters try to do, I mm-hmm. suppose. But um, yeah, it was so common. So you'd get these coins that were like 90% tin. Yeah. It's like it doesn't even look gold. No, you. No, it's it's you it's just hold it up to the light. Yeah. To the light, the right, right. <laughs> All right. So then, Brandon, Charles Brandon, yes, is is back. Brandon's back, and he's, and he's groveling. Yes, he groveled. He 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 really did grovel. He groveled. He said, "Please, sir, mm-hmm. may I have my spot back?" Yeah. And then they arm wrestled. Yeah. I guess we don't have a picture of them arm wrestling, but. This is something that would would go Mm -hmm. on, like people would arm wrestle. Yep. Like, I don't know if that happens so much anymore. Maybe it does. Maybe this is, maybe this is something else that listeners can let us know. (laughs) If people arm wrestle. Yeah. Do any of you out there solve your disputes by arm wrestling? My dad and I used to arm wrestle. Yeah. I've lived, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up on 38 now. And I, I don't know that I've ever been challenged like... Like Didn't you arm something. wrestle in school, or just for fun? No, yeah, we did, but but it was never like, all right, who's going to get to decide this tonight, or you know, mm-hmm. who's 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 going to get the girl, you or me? Let's, Let's arm, arm wrestle. wrestle. <laughs> yeah, okay, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. And then there's also wrestling. It's like the king. Hey, French king. Let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. Yeah, I just I love it. <laughs> This is the part I, this is the side I like. I don't like all the. There was a lot less, you know, it's interesting because, mm-hmm. like, we think about, like, the way we think about our bodies and nudity and sex and all this kind of stuff is a product of things that would come later, like Puritans and. Like Queen Victoria? Or something. Yeah, although, you know, it's interesting because pornography was at an all time high in England during the reign of Victoria, which of course mm-hmm. could be a reaction to it. But, um, you know, all of these kinds of like our views now are a product of stuff that would come yeah, yeah. after so it's like a totally different. Scene. Yeah. And, um, you know, back then there wasn't any such thing as privacy for anybody mm-hmm. in, especially the King, because he had people sleep at his feet yeah. all the time to make sure he was not going to be assassinated. And, um, you know, most people didn't have space in their houses for privacy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so the idea of like not seeing people naked and, and I mean, certainly you were, you would try to have some, you weren't going to go around naked just for fun, but, um, it wasn't like this very, Kind of. If there was someone else in the room, you weren't going to not going to have sex because you'd never have sex. Right. And like back in the Middle Ages, like everybody slept in the great hall, yeah. all the servants where the fireplace was. And so like everybody was doing everything mm-hmm. then. And so, yeah, it's just interesting. The idea of like a king wrestling and stuff like that. Like also this is like when, you know, kings led armies into battle. And so you had to like show that you were like you were tough and you could lead your men into battle and you could be a leader. And so you you'd arm wrestle too, you know? Yep. Yeah. So it seems as if it's like very clearly defined now as being like two sides of, of the court. Yes. Like Woolsey on the one side. Yes. And then seemingly everyone else on On the the other other side. side. Yeah. But that, that's a, like, that's fair to say, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess there's I mean, other I think things at this going point, on. And, just, and uh, divided everybody. And, you know, Catherine later on would try to align herself with Woolsey 
Um, you know, because Catherine at once at one point didn't like Woolsey because remember he was going to take her daughter and yeah. all this kind of stuff. But you know they try to ally themselves. Um, yeah, just to, 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 to try and each save each other. Together, snack. we yeah. can have some power. In yeah, the world. and so you know, I think at this point, like Anne, really was the dividing point for people. And I guess I was just you know I, I was thinking about that was where most of the characters were are um, yeah. Are most of the characters in this show like a fairly accurate kind of depiction yeah, like, of them? I mean, I not think that so. you personally knew them, but like it's like no one stands out. I mean, the, the, I guess the the Thomas Tallis gay love affair thing is the only thing that stands out. Is like, oh my gosh, yeah, like I can't believe they're making this person do this or yeah. whatever. And it's not like, yeah, yeah. No, I think. You know, and in some ways, they're all kind of caricatures of themselves, but mm-hmm. the the caricatures have a basis in, in truth. So in general, they're not completely like... No, like Henry had a lot of warmth and depth to him, especially earlier. You know, this this picks up where the drama with Anne starts, and they miss out on the first 10, 12 years of his reign, which is a long time. And, mm-hmm. you know, they they miss out on a lot of the stuff that he was passionate about then. And, you know, they try and show him writing the Defender of the Faith piece and, you know, try and show him. But I think he had a lot more depth than just this... Um, Womanizer. Who threw temper monitor, tantrums. Yeah. Random. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And the same thing with all these... I mean, it's, you can't show the depth of a character in no, I don't know, I get yeah, it. but um, I think that they're all kind of the the caricatures with trying to put a bit more um, a bit more depth into them. Okay, yeah, cool. And I mean, these are people that are so fascinating. You know that even five hundred years later, there's no there, there's no shortage of books and blogs and you know we're still studying them we're still learning new things about them and I doing mean, we're, we're here doing this yeah on and a show I, that's wildly popular <laughs> like i mean it yeah it's yeah not, and these these people are just so so they still fascinate us mm-hmm. and so um you know i think it's it, it it's like they're still alive it's it's yeah. interesting because you know i feel like so many people like their their hopes in life could be that you know if they live on like if you know i made a lasting impact in the world or you know if i'm in history books not that mm-hmm. everyone wants to aspire to be in history books but i guess what's what's interesting to me is one might think oh well i would have to you know discover a you know discover something like marie curie to mm-hmm. to to live on yeah. Like no, you just got to get wrapped up in some crazy, in some crazy drama, drama. <laughs> yeah. and just assert yourself in some way in that drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll live on forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's How funny. How funny. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, and Zsa Zsa Gabor died today. She did or yesterday. Something. Yesterday. Yeah. Just I I remember. Her, I, the reason I think about it is because I remember asking my parents when I was young, who is she? And they said, she's just famous for being famous. Like, she didn't even really... Like, yeah. I mean, I guess she was an actress, but she wasn't a famous actress. She was just yeah. famous for being Jaja Gabor and like slapping a police. Kim woman. Kardashian. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Like, she's done things. She, yeah. She's done more than wake up in the world, but... Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's Veering okay. off track. Wyatt Poetry... About yeah. Anne, like that's, I think we talked about this two or three shows ago, but that's, that's a real thing. Like mm-hmm. that there is existing poetry that in theory isn't inspired by Anne. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't say, oh, and that's the thing. It's Cause like, he, he wasn't going to come out and say like, right. Anne, I love you. Cause right. he just, he'd get his he'd head chopped off. His head yeah. Next to him. And he actually managed to escape the whole thing. So he was also accused with this group of like five people mm-hmm. that they said had, Where'd carnal relations with Anne and he was sent to the tower and mm-hmm. all of it. And he managed to get himself not, not having his head chopped off. He's a smooth talker. No, he, yeah. Thomas Wyatt. And he probably did have some kind of relations with Anne, which is probably. before she was married yeah. to, or, you know, well, we talked about that. Maybe he just had a crush on her from afar, mm-hmm. but either way there, he had feelings for her. Yeah. 
more than her brother George did mm-hmm. in a romantic sort of way. Yeah. So if you were going to go after people, he, in theory, could have been one that he went after. He was more guilty than other parties. That guilty were... in thought, if not in deed. Yes. But yes. And he managed to get out of it. So, yeah. He wasn't he he wasn't going to publish a bunch of poems and say by the way these are all to Anne because I love her. <laughs> yeah, bad just bad move. Yeah. 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 Um and then the last question, I I don't remember the final scene, but it just Anne was there again and it didn't seem like she needed to be there. It was when she was wearing the little crown and Woolsey came back and she was standing at the fire and Woolsey was saying like yeah, you know, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it, and yeah. he didn't want to say it in front of Anne to start with because he oh, wanted to wait like, for Anne to like, leave. Oh, if you say any, anything, you say in front of me. Yeah, and, yeah, and then like she's just always around. Yeah, gosh, I like serious. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if I, I would be really bothered if I was Woolsey, like you come back and it's like, what, what the hell is she doing here? I'm like, okay, well, I, I'm not going to say it until she leaves. It's like, no, she can she's hear it, cons- and it just be like. Like, the hell she grip. can. Like, yeah, what what is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. So the writing is on the wall. For Woolsey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also that Anne is, is coming into the... She will be part of this picture. Mm-hmm. Whether the world seems to yeah. want to allow it or yeah. not. I am Henry Rex. Henricus Rex. Henricus Rex. Yeah. Rex. Um, there's actually a, a really short film. It's like 20 minutes right now. It's called I am Henry that it's out on Vimeo and it looks at Henry, like kind of going into heaven and being met with all of the people that he had (laughs) killed. It's really, when you said I am Henry, it reminded me it's, it's a really interesting little short that that's on Vimeo anyway. So those are all my questions for the, for the week or for the episode. Cool. Yeah. And I'm trying to think about like, greater themes i think it's just like changing changes right mm-hmm. like the protestant reformation is coming and well, i think um, just that the, this and thing is in a passing phase yeah but i'm trying to think like in terms of greater societal like changes and yes. i don't really see that much just between i mean i think the thing about you know that henry and anne like henry is going to have mm-hmm. anne and however he can and that is going to usher in the protestant reformation for all of us yeah god that changed stuff yeah i mean that was like that's like a a wrench monkey wrench and they, and that changed every like individual's lives oh i, know. I mean all and sorts the of stuff disillusion of the monasteries and because like um, yeah i mean gay people can get married now yeah i mean you can't in the catholic church right i don't know yeah, we don't really follow Catholic, modern Catholicism. I'm an Episcopalian. Idea. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the Pope. It's like crazy to me that there's still a Pope. Okay, we're yeah, it's right. like way off topic. <laughs> okay, so thanks again for listening to the podcast. We, really we hope you like it. it. Yeah. yeah, and again, you can get more information about us and the show at watchingthetutors.com. And I'm trying to make show notes for each episode. I'm just trying to figure out how to work it. But anyway, I'm trying to make show notes. So again, please leave us a rating on iTunes. If you like the show as well, it makes a big difference. So thank you so much and Merry Christmas. And we're going to try to be back next week with sit with episode seven. Yes. And, and just, you know, just to be uh, all inclusive, whatever Happy Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. I don't think people actually celebrate Kwanzaa. Whatever you celebrate this this time of year, I hope it's good. Yeah. Solstice, New Year's, whatever. Diwali. All right. Thanks. All right. Yeah, thank you. And okay. I was just going to say, if you heard crackling in the background, we do have a fire going. So yeah, we do have a fire That's what that going. noise is. Nice. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.